Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalked the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Good evening and welcome to Drakenheim. This is our weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition live game with the Dungeon Dudes. My name is Monty Martin, running the game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, and I will be playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer. And we are joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis playing Veo Senya, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger. And Joe O'Gorman playing Pluto Jackson, the human battle mask. Uh, tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim is sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. Uh, they've sent us some fantastic premium metal dice to use at the game tonight. Uh, we've been rolling them, sometimes good, sometimes not so good, but they are pretty amazing dice. Yeah. They are balanced, balanced, which is yeah. what you want out of dice. Yeah, yeah I've got uh, my two sets that I'm using here, the, the solid gold and the burnished gold sets. Uh, they come in the really cool Skull Splitter Dice tins as well that give you space for organizing all of your dice as well as like cards or a miniature as well so it's a really handy thing to take to game night yeah you basically with the purchase of the dice you get a whole little kit to bring to all of your games uh and if you like skull splitter dice or dice in general and you want to get a set for yourself head on over to skullsplitterdice.com and be sure to use the discount code ddudes at checkout to save 15 percent off your first order when last we left our heroes they were imprisoned deep within the cistern stronghold of the Queen's Men and the Queen of Thieves. Breaking free from their cells remarkably, <laughs> they fought their way past the bugbears that were guarding their cells, freeing a member of the Hooded Lanterns in the process. Surveying the area of the complex, they have been left deep underground, easily over a hundred feet underground from what they can surmise they decided to instead of taking a few of the exits that were available to them push on deeper into the complex where they were confronted with the queen's council and now they sit in a small chamber at the top of the prison cells you've headed up about a level above where the prison cells are into a small guard room there is a table arrayed in front of you with several chairs around it. A few sets of manacles and keys hang on the wall, a set of switches as well. There is the portcullis that you came up through where the room that the hatch that leads down to the prison cells leads to. And then there are two doors, one uh, both on either side of the room from the hatch that came up, one of which um is behind you now the other door is the door that the queen's council exited and the queen of thieves entered you sit at the table with the queen of thieves there is no one else in the room with you her appearance changes and shifts as she chuckles to herself taking the shape briefly of jupiter jones oscar yorin petra lang Sten, Blackjack Mel, the thugs that you fought and killed several weeks ago, Mulg, briefly, before finally settling to the shape of the woman in red from the bar fight that escaped. And she says, This face will do for now. You gave her a bit of a tough time, I think. This will be familiar, but a little more personal, I think, for our conversation. Not too personal, thankfully. It'll do. So, you've beaten down my thugs. You've burst out of all your chains. You've fought out of your cells. And instead of taking the easy way out, you're here talking to me now. 
Why? Are you not a... I know why. It's because you want something, isn't it? You want something that I have. She's good. Well, you want... We want the things that you stole. Yeah, you... Can we have our stuff back? <laughs> you have it, but you stole it. It was our stuff. <laughs> but that's not why you're here, is it? Nope. Why do you think we're here, Queen? I have a theory. Go but I'd it. like to hear it from the horse's mouth. We kicked it. <laughs> that horse is dead. <laughs> it makes the same noise every time. Like a toy. I mean, there's lots of reasons why we, we're here. I mean, do you want us to start from the very beginning? We're technically here to climb the Spare ranks. Spare me your life story. Oh, okay. In the... And tell me why you've come to see me. Because that seems to be what you were after, wasn't it? It was. Why? We have to discuss the politics of Drakenheim. The politics of Drakenheim? And you are part of the... You are, you are one of the people in charge of a large group of people that run part of Drakenheim. And... Uh, we came to talk to you to make sure that we can proceed without interruption. And also there have been a few incidents lately. And uh, it is possible that you might know the whereabouts of somebody that we have business with. So you're asking me not to get involved in something? That is correct. I like to be involved in things. It helps me keep my fingers on the pulse of the city. Your involvement is to know that it's happening and not interfere. Then tell me, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take care of a null problem. Go on. We're building a better Drakenheim. And to do that, we got to start at the bottom. And that's the gnolls. If we deal with the gnolls, I feel like we can start to make some headway towards uh, Drakenheim 2.0. But to do that, uh, we need you to kind of just keep doing what you're doing just over here in this area and we came to tell you that personally respectfully my queen my lady a queen <laughs> <laughs> so who is helping you with this no problem we are not at liberty to say There's many parties involved. To be honest, I'm pretty sure everybody is somehow this has wouldn't a hand in it. happen to involve our new guests to the city that have made camp outside the city walls, or my old friend Elias Drexel. Would it? Potentially. She's good. She's I feel good. like you saying that you already know who's involved. I have my suspicions. And what is it worth it to you and your friends if I look the other way? I've had many problems with both the Hooded Lanterns and the Silver Order isn't likely to treat me very friendly afterwards either. Seems to me like it's the perfect moment for me to get a little bit ahead of the game. Why shouldn't I seize upon it? Everybody in the city is always talking about getting ahead in the game against the other people in this city. We're hoping to make 
a better Drakenheim, and I know we're just three people, but we're the only three people who are going around seemingly to all the factions and talking to their leaders. We fought in your fighting pits in hopes of obtaining an audience with you so that we could talk respectfully mm -hmm. about this. We don't want all this backstabbing Drakenheim, even though I know that you have a knack for backstabbing. The Hooded Lanterns see my people as liars, murderers, thieves, and worse. Are they not? That's a fair description. <laughs> In this Drakenheim 2.0, Wherever that term comes from. <laughs> it's a new term. We're trying it There's out. no place for mm. my people. I think there's room for all people in the new Drakenheim when one person or party isn't necessarily in control of everything. I don't think you're in a position to make those promises on behalf of the Silver Order nor the Hooded Lanterns. And I don't think that even if they made those promises to you, that they would. I don't expect them to keep it. We're not making them on the behalf of the Hooded Lanterns or the Silver Order. Then you've come empty-handed. Lady Thief, I, um, respectfully, what have your men done for you other than get murdered by three people walking into a bar and we fought our way out of the prison and seemingly you can do better than the company that you currently keep. What are the men worth to you? Why Why is it so important that you have this grasp? There's more than just men here. There's many others. And yes, I must say, I'm impressed with your ability to cut them down and butcher them. They're all just trying to survive. And it's on them to do so. But we can... I must say, I share your idealism of a city worth fighting for, of a new place that is more than just ashes and scraps. But the old ways, the ways of the Silver Order, the ways of the Hooded Lanterns, they're not going to be new ways for my people, for the people that I protect. Those people, the reasons why their lives, why they've lost their lives, to being murderers, deserters, is because other people made those decisions for them. Half the people here are deserters from the wars that the hood, that people like Elias Drexel forced them to fight in. The other half of them are just survivors trying to find feed feed their own mouths. People who couldn't be protected by anybody else. If we have to resort to banditry, thievery, scavenging to survive because we've done it on our own terms. Because certainly the Hooded Lanterns and the Silver Order, they didn't care about any of these people. Someone has to look out for them. I know, I'm kind of surprised you weren't in this game. <laughs> Honestly, I may have survived the city without necessarily a hand-holding by the Hooded Lantern, but I did it without taking advantage of other people who were trying to survive which is what I've come across over my past 15 years in the city. I wish others were so fortunate. But they're not. It's true. And I think in a Drakenheim that survives this massacre of the city that's happened, it would be great if people didn't have to do this. And that's what we're trying to help build towards. And I'd say that it's it's not necessarily one faction's job to get it there and queen who do you think would be able to build a city that has your vision of the future do you think it doesn't include those other factions no i don't i have a different vision 
for this city. One where it's a place of freedom. With you ruling. I'm not a ruler. Not really. I would say I would question your definition of freedom. Hmm. Then I would say you don't know what it means to be free. Maybe you're just a caged little cat. Maybe I am. In any case... I want Drakenheim to remain a free city. No kings, no gods, no masters. But that doesn't change the fact that Drakenheim is a different place. The delirium isn't going anywhere. I'm, I'm working on some research on that. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Of course. And when, when that research is, do is done, it's just going to make everyone want it even more, isn't it? The delirium? Of course. My goal is to... Your friends at the Academy are ravenous for it. They can't get enough of it. They want more and more and more and more and more. And I don't know what they're going to find out. I have no idea what the delirium does, what it could do, what it could be. But I know one thing. When the Amethyst Academy finds out the answer to that question, and they've already started to answer it, that little box of yours is something else. Do you really think the Amethyst Academy is going to let anybody control Drakenheim but themselves? When I started on this mission quest thing, um, I thought that the Amethyst Academy was the right people to lead in to, uh, to a new Drakenheim, but I won't disagree with you that I do have a lot of questions for them now. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I am going to need that box back. You can't hand me the keys to the city on a silver platter and expect me to give them back. We, we didn't hand them to you. We are having a respectful conversation, and you have taken some items from us that do belong to us. And here we are having a nice chat around a table. We fought our way here to talk to you. And you've stolen from us, and that is unfortunate and Your not possessions very polite. are mine. But, but, as a show of good faith, I offer their return plus interest. Minus a few expenses for damages done to my operation. Can I have my goggles <laughs> and my mother's book? Seems fair. That seems fair. Can I have a wand? I really like that one. That wand. depends on the outcomes of this conversation. <sighs> fair? Listen, I don't think the Anthus Academy is bad by any stretch. In fact, their money is helping feed mouths, keep us alive here. A fair number of my boys find pieces of delirium, and the Amethyst Academy doesn't care who, who's, who they're paying. They'll pay us just as much as they'll pay anyone else for delirium. You need to do that. That's true. That's how I've been living. And I tell you, that gold can do some beautiful things, can't it? It can feed a lot of mouths, yeah. So, I see no reason to work with the Amethyst Academy, but I certainly would love to keep them as a customer. Why is she making sense? <laughs> She's the sense. smartest one we've ever met. <laughs> Thank you so much. Did you say that out loud? I'm flattered. I might have said it out loud. Is that the and first in my thing you've mind. Said? 
We have had our disagreements. Have we? We killed a bunch you of people. You have killed a bunch of my men. <clears throat> they also had tried to attack uh, us. Yes, they, they did. They did. Without and provocation. We we never started a fight with them. Not once. In the grand game that we play, no. we could continue to have this yes. back and forth. And I think you would make for healthy competitors. But despite our misgivings, I'm going to be honest. I'm not interested in killing you. You've proven disruptive, but that's the cost of doing business in Drakenheim. Nevertheless, what you're worth to me alive is also a matter of some debt. There's some scales to balance. I mean, you're right. We are really good at what we do. Throwing pebbles <laughs> in the water. We are really good at what we do. It's just about turning us towards the right target, I think. That's mm. that's great, yeah. We've just been turned towards certain targets. And we haven't really found, I would say, the right target yet that really appeals to every piece of what we're looking for in Drakenheim. I think there are pieces of everybody that really align with certain aspects, but... We haven't fit found anything that hits all the right boxes yeah. yet. And uh, we're very capable, as you can tell. Mm -hmm. So with the right motivation, the right equipment, and the right set of wands. <laughs> <laughs> and the right goggles. And the right goggles. If you point us in the right direction, maybe we can be mutually beneficial towards uh, New Drakenheim. You still owe me a debt, and you still have to answer for the, all those of mine that you've killed. Yes, they attacked you, but they're not going to like that I just let you live. Uh, the ones in the fighting pit knew what they signed up for. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> That's true. They all know. So what are you suggesting as this debt to be paid? You can keep all my gold. I'd like my gold. Hmm. I miss it. Well, convince me of your value and win my wager. I and then we might have a partnership. What do you value? I keep company with thieves, liars, murderers, and worse. In my experience, greed is a far more honest motivator than trust, and results speak far louder than loyalty. I don't expect you to trust me. Oh, we don't. <laughs> you would be very foolish if you did. Yeah. Turning coat is my nature, and I expect no less from you. In fact, Consider it a mark of personal res I'd consider it a mark of personal respect if you betrayed me one day. But for now <laughs> just so creepy. If you're to work with me hmm. show me that you're the ca the only ones capable for the job. How? Well, I've got a little challenge for you. I do love challenges. Is it a... Uh... Okay, so... To reach our next goal, we will pile as many corpses as necessary. If it's a fighting challenge, we're really good at that. If it's a puzzle challenge, <laughs> seemingly not so much. Yeah. So we got yeah. Please in the do not place. give us any more puzzles. <laughs> no more cups. We can't figure it out. <laughs> we put it this way. Unless we can fight the cups. <laughs> Attack it. I want my my crew to know that you're under my control. And there's only one way you're gonna prove that now. You're gonna have to win over the mob, not me. And there's only one thing the mob wants to see from you three. 
a fight. A good fight. Yep, a good fight. If you show them a good fight and you don't die, then we might have a deal. You said we're worth more to you alive than dead. I don't know that yet. (laughs) And if you can't win the fight, you definitely aren't worth anything to me. Well, that's fair. I mean, we've won every fight we've fought so far. I mean, that's generally the way it goes. Yeah. You only ever lose one fight in Drakenheim. Well, you can run away from the fights. That's Uh, not losing. That's saving. Thinking about our deal, if we fight this, earn the respect of the crew... What are we getting? I'll give you your things back. Everything? No. What are we getting back? I'm keeping Queen Lenore's ring. Mm. I'm keeping your fun little bomb. Mm. Oh. And I'm I mean, it's not a bomb. The steward's badge. No. No. That is my only thing that I need need back. It's my father's. That ring makes me feel much more protected when I'm out there. I don't even care about the ring. <laughs> and it's hard for us to just give you a bomb. I'm keeping these in confidence, and I will return them to you with interest once you've demonstrated that you can get results. But I need a little bit of collateral here. What if, if we win, you get to keep the box, and we get to keep the key? What kind of fool do you take me for? That means that you cannot blow us up, and we cannot blow you up. No, I'd like to be able to keep the ability to blow you up if I need to. I don't love that. I feel like this is not an equal bargain. We're, are we in a... Are we in a position to make an equal bar? Yes, it's sweeten we're like the pot a little bit. I know there. many secrets about the city. I know many secrets too. Uh, this actually mm. brings me to the other thing that we are that we came here to talk to you about. We're after Oscar Yorn. I could tell you where he is. That's not worth my father's badge. No, we still want that stuff back eventually. Mm. Listen. If you prove yourselves, I can offer you knowledge. Drakenheim is an old city. There's tunnels, passages, catacombs everywhere. They're dangerous. Many of them haven't been reclaimed. We could claim them together. So many lost treasures. The cathedral. The academy tower. Maybe the castle itself. In the heyday, the old smugglers, there were tunnels to all of them and more. And we could find some more answers and some more secrets, if that's what you're really looking for. And if that's not enough for you, I know what happened to Johann Eisner. I know why you were expelled from the Amethyst Academy. And I also know about George. (gasps) What do you know about my father? I know where he is. I know what happened to him. At least. I know the last person who ever saw him. How on earth would you know why I was expelled from the academy? Information is my business, please. That means there's a leak in the academy. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to find my father. Who's George? And... I'm willing to (laughs) help you towards that goal. But I'm keeping the badge until the time comes that you need it. She 
He's good. Those, I don't know about you. I, I know yours was a big name drop. I'm nervous about anybody who knows anything about anything. We'll get to that later. No one else could give me that information. I have been asking for years about where my father is. And you think the Hooded Lanterns were able to tell me? No. You think anyone was able to tell me? No. The Amethyst Academy was extremely particular in the in my expulsion. I don't I'm, that, I don't know. Well, I'm concerned. Do you Does it really surprise you that she has this information? Yes. Do you want to keep it secret? Considering she turned into a river? Yes. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I have a I have a question, Queen. River's a real person, right? Like <laughs> the the person I grew up with, River. Oh My yeah, yeah, from... yes, yes, of course she is. Oh, yes. Okay. Is there anyone who we've met who isn't a real person? I mean, this is the first time we've been in the same room together. I was gonna oh, ask okay. that. Have we met before? We haven't had the pleasure. Mm. Have cool. we met before? She's uh driven me out. <laughs> no, this is the first time I've met any of you. In person. But I know a lot about you all. We're famous. I can read you like a book. Speaking of books, that's that's in the cards for me to get that back, right? I said everything but those three mm. things. To be honest, I'm... I want to know when the time is that you think is appropriate for me to get this badge back. Mm. Because it's... It's the only thing in this whole of the world that I value more than anything. Excellent. I'm, o I'm open with that. <laughs> good. It's good to know that it's the only thing in this whole world that you value. I mean, other than my dad. My dad, I guess I value more than that badge. Are we on the list? And you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you guys do. Are you sure? That badge has been with me longer than you guys have. But I do value your lives over a piece of metal, of course. We just wanted to hear you say it. <laughs> <laughs> like, we really wanted to hear you say it in that moment. <laughs> I love you guys. Because I don't want to take a crit. <laughs> but seriously, I want that badge back. <laughs> what do you need me to do? I love those words. Oh. Oh. She's got us. We can fight. We can win over the mob. We can be spectacular. Wonderful. Show me what you've got. <laughs> With that, she stands. You, uh, better get ready. We'll have you up in an hour. I know that you promised that we could get our stuff back after we prove ourselves. Can I get a spell casting focus? Can we have it now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have a bag full of garbage that I picked up in your dungeon that's allowing me to cast spells, but it doesn't feel as... It's a bag. Of, you, you have to reach in and... <laughs> I have to reach in and pull out it's webs It's mostly and just cocoons. cobwebs and cocoons. Yeah, it's full of Are you bugs. asking me for a fair fight? Yeah. No, I'm asking you for... A spell casting focus so I can cast spells without <laughs> using garbage. Beyond that door, yeah. take the stairs down to the arming room. Hopefully you can find something useful to you. It, the arming room. I love the arming room. If you had more arms, you'd be fine. You could just... Are we all arming up? You've got an hour. Make of it what you will. Well, let's hurry. And she stands up readjusts her appearance again and steps back out through the door. What are you? Did Did she just walk into the room and convince us all to fight on her behalf? Yes. <laughs> oh man. She has my stuff and she knows where my dad is. He's literally like numero uno prevail. Okay. And now I I'm referring to myself in the third person. <laughs> Pluto, who's George? First. More importantly, I want to use the feature Know Your Enemy. 
after we chit chat, mm -hmm. it does she have more total class levels than me? Yes. And AC. Does it let you know her current armor class? Or does it tell you that... It just is... says if it's higher or lower. Equal, superior, Because your AC is currently very low. Because okay. you're not in plate armor. Is that what you want to choose? No. No. I mean, your AC is what? 15? Right now it's like 50. That still gives us a... Although, I don't know. I feel like She's if gonna I don't be get super. my bad back, my AC's not gonna go up. Um, I actually feel like asking that might be beneficial because you're in the mid ground, so knowing if she is higher or lower is beneficial. If you were at twenty, I'd assume she's lower. I'd feel like she's superior, but maybe hit points? I have sixty seven right now. Does she have is she equal to me? She has more than you. No. Oh. She's so strong. <laughs> she leaves the room and that's what you've surmounted. <laughs> She's a lot stronger than She's me. She's <laughs> a lot stronger and a lot more powerful than me. <laughs> I gave her a, uh, an up and down. I was like, oh boy. <laughs> um, I guess we're uh, fighting. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to follow her instructions. I'm going to go down, open the door, head down the stairs. Because we can chit chat while we yeah, I follow. arm ourselves. Yep. We... we what did what what happened? She dangled the tuna in front of me, and I went for it. Ah, she's got us. Yeah, I in, mean, in a you bad head down way. the stairs, and it leads into a small arming room that uh, is roughly forty feet by forty feet in size. The stairs come down into into the room, and there's two doors leading off into other passages. Um that both one going down another set of stairs. In the room, there are two ogres clad head to toe in chainmail, holding large hammers. And there's another, uh, there's another set of stairs leading up out of the arming room as well. And, but there's a closed portcullis over it how that portcullis opens from this room is not clear. In the room are several benches, small tables. There's some water and bread uh, and a few haunches of meat. Um, one of the ogres is leaning on his hammer and eating a leg of turkey uh, as he regards you. He, he nods. Yeah. He says, as you come in, Queen says... You can take what you can carry, if you can use it. In the room are an array of martial weapons, ammunition, um, a few sets of uh, leather, hide, and chainmail armor, some shields, um, and there are some staves that you could use as a spellcasting focus. Any jackets? I'm still wearing rags. There, there are some... There are some bits of clothing, um, light jackets and jerkins and things like that of, of leather that wouldn't represent putting on the full leather armor, but enough that you don't feel naked. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I've been walking around in underwear. For Notably, a while. there are no goggles. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I throw together an outfit that looks most reminiscent of the Sebastian Crow. Yeah, just a ragtag group of of scoundrels. We're being uh, <laughs> we're just we're being Ragnarok right now. Oh my gosh. I want to put on some <laughs> leather armor. armor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to put on that chain mail. Okay. I grab a staff. Uh, I grab the coolest staff. Uh, there is one staff in there that does have like a focusing crystal affixed to the end of it. Um, and you pick that up. I pick it up and I look at the ogre. I'm like, does the crystal glow when I cast spells? Of course it does. Good. I'll take it. <laughs> Style's important. When you're trying to woo the masses. <laughs> um, as um, as you're arming yourselves, you can take a short rest while you, while you put these, these, these on. But after a, a few minutes, um, there's a cry coming down the stairs. Um, 
as someone, as you hear footsteps running down and huffing down the stairs that are coming to the portcullis, and you see at the bottom of the stairs, banging on the portcullis, is Blackjack Mel. Mel! I can't believe it! You guys made it here! You're gonna fight in the Queen's Arena! That's kind of ironic, but awesome! (laughs) You got us here, Mel. I know! I told you I'd get you here. I put in a good word for you. The Queen said she had to size you up. You already got your audience. Never let it be said that Blackjack Mel doesn't come through for his friends. So I'm gonna get a cut. Yeah, right? Yes. Fantastic. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, technically he did get us. I can't say no to him. Uh, Is is Wagner with us? (laughs) Um, he has been, been brought with you, um, but he's not going to fight, uh, in, in this. And the, um, the, <laughs> one of the know. ogre, one of the ogres points to him and says, you there, come back up the, uh, this other way. Is he going to be okay? He'll be fine. I think we <laughs> failed that rescue. Does, um, does Blackjack <laughs> Mal find it odd that I'm now okay? <laughs> He does, but after a moment, he figures. He he he, he says, "There's a ton of cool cats down here. You didn't have to hide who you really are. Never be afraid to show who you really are in the inside. This is a very affirming and safe space. I mean, despite all the violence and murder." <laughs> I'm a cool cat. <laughs> I, the Queens men are so progressive. <laughs> this is actually quite refreshing. It is. It is, is, isn't it? I'm really concerned. I kind of like it here. I feel like I've probably been doing the same thing that they've been doing the whole time in Dragonheim. We align with them (laughs) so much more than we want to admit, and I I think that's what's so scary. That's what's so scary is that I don't want to make the leap. I have friends in both. We're the heroes of Dragonheim, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Are we the... But sometimes in Dragonheim, you gotta do what you gotta do to... Make it happen. Which is the Queen's views on Drakenheim. Mm. Blackjack Mouse speaks. Mm. Everyone's all abuzz. They say that you guys have challenged the Queen's for the championship bout. Everyone's excited. All the boys are here. Everyone's coming down. It's going to be amazing. Tell them to put bets on me. Uh, do, we, do we still go by fresh meat or have you come up with a better name for us? That's a good question. I mean, I'm supposed to introduce you after all. Um, uh, well, Mel, I think what we're looking for... The Queen Strike Force. We're, we're, we need to wow them out there, okay? We need not just a name, but we need some spectacle, mm. some, some pizzazz. We, we want to put on a show that's going to that's gonna just ring throughout the arena for for decades well the name with a great name i really hope you don't die out there i mean i got a lot riding on you guys i mean i might have made some side bets don't tell anyone but you know we cook the books here it's how we get by mel we haven't died yet that's a very good point now maybe maybe you have some tips on uh what does the crowd love do they love the Decapitation. They love decapitations. <laughs> they love ox of blood. They love broken bones. They love burning bodies. Do they like a close fight, or do they like something that's one sided? Like, how can we make them? You gotta give them a little bit of everything. If I murder someone with arrows, will they like that? <laughs> they probably will. Perfect. This is good. This that's, is good. This is my strategy. This bodes well. Shoot for arrows from my bow. Hit the people. They die. Okay, guys, I got a plan. You're gonna shoot arrows. Okay. I'm going to cast spells. What am I going to do? I mean, the what Queen's champion, rumor has it, she's, is really something else. It's going to be pretty exciting. Wait, what do you know about the Queen's champion? Yeah, Mel, what do you know? All I know is that the Queen found her in the ruins. She was crazy, took a ton of people to bring her in. They call her Big Linda. Oh, no. Do you know what she is? <laughs> Never seen her at all in my life before. But, got to warn you. There's another group that's come down here. They're gonna want, they're gonna challenge you to go at the at the title. You gotta go through them before you get to challenge Big Linda. Are they as good as the bugbear that we fought in the last arena? Remember those guys I was gonna put you up against before? Yeah, we got them. 
great, Mel. Great, Mel. You're honestly, your enthusiasm is infectious. Yep. And I'm actually well, getting you. really excited. Even though we could die. Mm-hmm. So what am I going to call you all? How am I going to introduce you? The they on the biscuits. We're well, probably it's probably best to call us the Jackson Three. All right, guys. I think this. This is, is it. not going to work anymore. I need a real name. <laughs> this is it. This is it. Blood, blood, barbecue. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I'd rather have. I mean, if it doesn't work blood. out, you can always break up and reform under a different name. That kind of thing happens all the time. Guys, what's our name? This is it. This is the moment. Um. What was our what was our gang name? The, like the pedals. What was the play we put on? Called the, the Angel of Virtue and the Devil of Sin. Um. We are the three ghosts. We are. Come on, guys. We're three with me ghosts. All right. I we'll guess. go with it. <laughs> I guess. We'll go Wait, with that it. I don't really, get the joke, but we'll go really with it. That doesn't really ensure confidence that we're going to live. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Um, I feel like, like... We're the Ghostbusters? I think I, that's copyrighted. <laughs> uh, are we the... <laughs> There's no time for it. We'll Tower. go with it. We'll Dragon roll with Force. it. We'll see what the... The Dragon Force. <laughs> <laughs> no? What's it going to be? We'll figure it out. Maybe we'll have to put it to a vote sometime. We could just be Veo, Sebastian, and Pluto. VSP. <laughs> well, I'm going to do we it. Are so Visp. We are Visp. 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 I hate coming up with a name. And it's and you kind of say it, and hey. it kind of spit a little bit. Mel, no, you know what? You say Mel, it. you know us better than anyone. Yeah. You announce what's in your heart. When we come out there, wait. What? what no, my name's all Deb. right. <laughs> I'm Deb, and you're you're knife gut Pete. Pluto. I am not human. I am. Anyways, I am the other competition's coming down here to arm up too. So stay out of the way till the fight. You know, don't let it break out first. Oh, oh that's well, fair. Well, I guess what, they want the show. They want the show. We'll give them a show. <sighs> when you're all ready. You just let Ugly here know that you're ready, and and they'll they'll bring you up. Is, is that your a, name Ugly? Is that his name? <laughs> <laughs> the ogre like crosses. No. What? What's your name? <laughs> my name is. My name is Ugbar. Oh. People just call me Ugly. It's not funny. But you're beautiful. Thank on the, you. On the inside, maybe I just met you. <laughs> Um, what else is in the room? Ugbar, is there a hand crossbow anywhere? Oh, yeah, there, there is. Sweet. There, yeah. I pick up a hand crossbow. And... Yeah. What else should I? I can <laughs> make. This yeah, up. there's at least one of each <laughs> weapon that you could possibly want. And I could. What and you can need? take a short rest if you need to over the course of the hour. Is there anything else you want to do or prepare before you go into fight? I start eating all the food on the table, including a bigger turkey leg. Can than I? Can I have some? anyone? Okay. Can I have a piece of bread? Is there like for a while <laughs> extra utility stuff like rope? I hand or, over the smallest piece um, of bread. <laughs> torches, or uh, there's there is some rope, um, and. You could definitely throw together a torch. Okay. Yep. I'm going to make a torch and take some rope, too. Who knows? You never know. Okay. I have to do, like, the Empire Strikes Back. Go for the legs. On Linda. Big Linda. Go for the legs. Go for the legs. After a few minutes, you could already start to hear that there is the loud sounds coming from... The short hallway that leads to the to leads off the rooms. You can start to hear this roaring crowd in the distance chanting and and uh, saying, um, calling out for blood and and murder. After a short while, Blackjack Mel comes back down, and says, "All right, you all ready." Did the other group also come in and get armed up? They they came into the other army okay, room on cool. the other side. You guys pumped? I'm kind of pumped. I don't know. This is uh this is this is exciting. We're stars. 
I always wanted to be. Under the circumstances, I don't appreciate being blackmailed into fighting, but... <laughs> that's that's actually, yeah, it's really mature of you, Mary, yeah. But if I had to fight, you know, if I have to claw someone's eyes out, I'm, I'm not too, you know, I feel scared. like this is a necessary evil if uh, we, we kind of got ourselves into this mess. If anything, the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do one crossword every day from now on. So I will never... <laughs> Puzzle. <laughs> fall apart during puzzle time. Do you remember again. that time when we had a choice to continue fighting in some pits or going down to investigate some traps and we chose the traps Yep. and somehow we've ended back in the pits? I've learned Isn't that funny how life goes? Life's, life's interesting like that. Mel, I think we're ready. Yep. All right. There was no potions or anything, right? <sighs> Make an investigation check. I'm not good at that. Two. Not that you could find. <laughs> I didn't. Do I find liquid? There's water. There's lots of bottles of water. Okay. I'm going to hydrate. <sighs> okay. All right, guys. You can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs, so let's go are smash some people? skulls. Their heads. Yes. Oh, for their, their heads are eggs. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're going to smash And we're going to make yes. so many omelets. So omelets. Many. It's going to be a buffet. An okay. egg buffet. I just ate, but now I'm hungry At again. Brunch. Mel, Mel leads you down the down the hall and says, they, "You know, they had a bit of a warm up fight before you got there, so you know the blood's already kind of pumping. Just, uh, just, uh, you know, if you, it's a little loud in there, but this is exciting stuff. Exciting stuff." He leads you down a hallway that is filled with dust, flecks of blood, scratches in the walls of many. Uh, like uh, the old Ackerman Mill, scratches in the walls of the last words of people that, that, as they came to fight, many of which have been scratched out. And at the end of the hallway, uh, lit with torches, there is a big set of double iron-bound doors that another ogre is standing in front of with his arm, arms crossed. And you can see that he lifts the bar off the, the door and he says, Once you're in, you're in. And you don't come out until you win. One second. I'm going to mold earth and scratch our names into the wall. Nice. Dragon Force? Sure. I was just putting our names. But oh, okay. Yeah. Alrighty. He opens the doors, and there's a, bit, a surprising amount of light comes through. Um, and <laughs> ushers you through the doors. Is it breathtaking? In front of Where's you my breath? is a massive underground cave, which is supported by four great pillars that are holding up the, the cave itself. However this cave came into being, it's not clear. It looks like it might have once been a fissure of some kind, but then these four pillars of stone have been erected in here to hold up and support the entirety of it it kind of curves into a rough dome shape over top the whole thing is is roughly a large square at the at the base in the room as you come through there's bits of rubble and ruin because you can see that there are two large bubbling pools of acid in the arena floor and on the opposite side there is a great cavernous cave and there's a small looks like a bit of water that is flowing over it like a veil that is then draining in a set of drains underneath there's another set of doors directly opposite you built of the same construction and then lining the entire space about 40 feet up because the cavern itself is roughly 60 feet high the lining the, the whole way carved our box seats and balconies all in in the cavern including one great balcony stretching across over the acid pools where you can see seated uh on a throne of sorts is the queen of thieves uh who has taken uh has it has taken the same form that she had in the last meeting with you, that of the uh, the thief, Korra. Uh, and she is surrounded by the counselors that were with her earlier. 
Um, and then you can see that the whole area is filled with all manner of thieves, queen's men of all the different gangs. They're all kind of all sitting in their own sections uh, in this in the midst of this massive underground arena. And the chanting is overpowering. Um, people are screaming um, and, and they're saying various things like, rip them in half! Um, and the, the whole place smells like sweat and desperation, alcohol, a little bit of urine, popcorn, uh, and then there's that acrid smell of the acid as well. You guys want to make a spectacle of do, our entrance? Do, do we do we shake hands with them? Are we gonna do like yeah? Do we do warm ups? I'm gonna get into my calisthenics. Like, Are we like jumping have we, jacks and stretching? Have we walked through the door yet, or is it? Just yeah, a... you you are you are in the room now. Okay, uh, I, I wave. And as you uh, as you come in, the op- opposite doors open. And three figures step in. The first one is a lanky man, um, with uh, he he has kind of desert yellow skin, and he is lightly armored, and he's carrying a halberd, and he's wearing several bandanas, and has a few skulls strapped just as his shoulder pads. Um, and he's sporting like this big dyed red mohawk that's going in streaks across his hair. Beside him enters a smaller woman, um, and she is wearing a skull for a helmet that then has horns coming out from it. And you can see that it looks like she might be carrying a wand of some kind, and she has these streaking red capes that are coming off of her her shoulders, and looks like she might be wearing leather armor. (coughs) Behind them comes out a hulking ogre that is wearing a helmet that totally conceals his face. Spiked pauldron armor. And he is carrying a massive spiked chain that he's swinging in a wide arc. The three of them enter, um, and as as both groups enter... The Queen of Thieves raises her hand, and the whole room goes silent. You can hear a pin drop. She says, These three down here have caused us no end of trouble. They've killed some of our brothers and sisters, and they've come in here to challenge me. What do we think of all that? And everyone's like, boo! Oh, feed me. And she, she me silences booze. them and says, Feed me your booze? <laughs> yeah. Nevertheless, my th- they want to challenge my champion and prove that they aren't worthless. Whichever the two of you can survive each other will face my champion. I give this as a gift to you all. Enjoy. Is Mel here? Yes, he's he's on the bleachers. He's like, go! <laughs> You're gonna do awesome! Um, do, do we know the rules? Are there any rules? Kill them. Just kill them. Excellent question. The rules are simple. You may beg for your life if you wish. Last one standing wins. So push them over. (laughs) (laughs) When you're ready, roll for initiative. Yes. I do always roll all my crits on initiative. <laughs> always. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Um. Yeah. Just let's just follow Leo's arrow. Uh, Vare's arrow. That's 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 my. Uh. Without 
Without that ring, I'm a little squishy. Um, it's okay. I'll stay behind you. I'll, I'll, I'll ac- I accept all of the, especially, uh, yeah, big chain guy. Ooh. You've got him, right? You've you've got the big <laughs> chain guy. I think I got. I this? mean, there's one for each of us. I'll take the lanky dude. <laughs> okay. The lanky dude. We got to team up. You ready? You're right. We have to fight yes. the one thing, <laughs> the big thing. <sighs> so make it or break it. So we're gonna break it. <laughs> we gonna break it. <laughs> Sebastian, what do you got? Five. Pluto. Seventeen. Veil? 26. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. So we have... You are facing... Dorag the Unchained. That's the ogre. Oh, so he took the chains off himself, and now he destroys his enemies with them. I'm trying to come up with a narrative. It makes it easier to kill them. Does it? I thought it was just easier if they were just monsters. <laughs> Monsters or not. Yeah, I'm backwards on this one. Krusk, the this. skull taker. Krusk. And they also have a theme. They have like all this skull theme. What's our theme? Do we have and like Fusama, a... An aesthetic? The mysterious. An yeah. aesthetic that we follow? We're cool. Yeah. yeah. Everyone wants to be us. Yeah. We're the popular ones. So... Are we? <laughs> Sebastian's going dead <laughs> last. Know. As we get booed. As I do. <laughs> then Paluto. Wow. Uh-oh. Uh, then... Then everyone else and then Their Bayo. team... <laughs> Oh, jeez. Didn't you roll a 17? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Oh, you rolled... Uh, sorry. I, I For some reason, I thought you said you rolled a 12. That's not correct then. <gasps> Yay. Yay. <laughs> Spread it out more. Give us a chance. We have a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. Okay. So Unchained is goes right before Sebastian. Yep. So we got... Asama, Veo, Paluto, Krusk, Dorag, and Sebastian. Veo first. Veo first. Alrighty. With that, the door slams shut behind you. And the crowd goes wild. Veo, you're up. And I pull out my bow. (laughs) (laughs) And it's over. (laughs) And... I I Zephyr Strike with one of my few remaining spell slots. I take my advantage. And I'm going to aim for the woman. Okay. Twenty. Your bolt sails across the field, and as it comes towards her, she vanishes oh. from sight. All right. A uh, haze what? of mist. No. Well, that's one taken care of. Is she gone now? Is she just disappeared? She disappears. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. Keep doing one hits. I take my second <laughs> one shot. One <hit> everyone. <laughs> um, on. The big guy. 17? 17? It hits. Uh. Dun, 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 dun. D8. I'm going to take my 1d8 for my Zephyr Strike on this one. And... I don't get my... I didn't have advantage on this one, so I don't get my... Sneak attack. Eighteen? Uh, no, wait. Yes, eighteen. Eighteen? Eighteen damage. Great. And I take my last shot on the same guy. Oh, critical miss. Oh no! <laughs> so <laughs> the the bolts, af- as uh. Uh, Fasama disappears. You re-aim, firing a shot at Dorag. The arrow lands in him, and he doesn't even flinch. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Um, then I'm going to use my feline agility, uh, and I'm gonna take my movement, and I'm gonna run 
around to the flaming flame. The flaming flame. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get right behind it. Yeah. I'm keeping an eye out because I don't know where this disappeared woman went to. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Alrighty. So you run over to the flaming flame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, no. We're so ready. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm so scared. Mm-hmm. So with that, Fasama reappears. Look, all she can do is disappear. Maybe she's maybe that's her shtick. And she casts Evard's black tentacles mm-hmm. on Sebastian and Polito. No. Blah, 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 blah. Um so at the start of your turns, you're gonna need to make dexterity saving throws against the as the the basically this inky mass of black tentacles emerge up from the ground underneath you, filling that four by four square there. Do you want to mark that with the web template? Yeah. Uh, reaching up to ensnare the two of you. Great. Hmm. Um, next up is Paluto. Uh, I'm gonna try to get away from the. All right. Stuff. Make your dexterity saving throw against the tentacles. 21. You do so. Uh, you manage to evade out of the way uh, and are not restrained by the tentacles. Yeah! Um, and then I calmly step forward. Okay. And I'm going to huck my lightning javelin at the big dude. Nice. I yell out some elven words that you taught me. Yeah, I read the scripture. Too. Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, it's like when someone's learning a new language, they just they know that one word, so I know it. Cool. And I huck, lightning arrow. Um. Twenty. You're just firing it as the oh. lightning bolt. I think I have to make dexterity saving throws, don't I? Isn't it just a, bi- a lightning bolt? Yeah, he uh, uh, thirteen DC dex. And how long's the range of it? Um. 120 feet. Oh my god, it's such a huge line. Okay, so yeah. So he's got to make a DC 13 <laughs> dexterity saving throw. Uh, he gets a 13. Hitting the deck and dodging the, the, the lightning. Does it still do half damage on a miss? Uh, yeah. Nice. Ten damage. <laughs> okay. So it's half of that? Yeah. Okay. Ugh. Nice. Anything else uh, you'd like to do? And then it... Um. Everybody got hit by ten damage. Was there anybody that got hit? No, right. It was just him. Yeah. But then he get on a hit. The target takes the damage. Okay. So then he so a, a twenty to hit. Okay. And then four. Second. <laughs> uh, nine damage. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, those d sixes hurt. How many ones did you just roll? <laughs> like five. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Um, yeah. So enjoy your lightning, and then I'm gonna pull out my long sword and start to make my way in front of the pillar. Okay. Yeah, in front of that big one. Okay. Uh, as you walk forward. Uh oh. No! Panels open up. Ah! And spikes shoot up through the floor towards you. So it only so the panel just drops by about six inches, and then sp- spears shoot up uh, at you, and you can make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, eleven. Okay. Uh, eleven. Uh, that uh, you uh, you managed to save. Uh, so you manage to dodge out of the way of the spikes uh, a- as they fly up, and then they are now they re- reset down, and 
drop down another couple feet after they fire back up after firing up and Uh-oh. i know that they're there now yeah <laughs> okay spikes there's yeah, spikes the pit here. stays open yep anything else pluto uh no i'm just awaiting my untimely death okay so <laughs> confidently confidently Dorag flies into a rage, howling out, and his muscles bulge, and like you can see the veins underneath, and he lumbers forward. Technically, Krusk was next, but you can. We can we can reverse them. I don't mind. Yay! It works Yay. both ways. <laughs> um. Uh, He manages to leap over them as he does so, spitting the chain around his head uh, and bringing it down uh, upon you, Paluto, Uh with a massive strike. Hello. Getting 19 to hit. That hits me. You take 13 points of uh, piercing damage, and I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Oh. Uh, Like... 25. You are not stunned. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> As this, he basically re- rushes forward, takes the chain, slams it right in, into you, uh, in, into your head with like hurricane force. Um, and you manage to, sl- it rings your bell of your helmet. Does he have reach on it? He does. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Cool. Good thing I had my helmet on. Guys, helmet safety first. And then we go to Krusk. Okay. Krusk is going to rush forward. And as he does so, he, he lowers his glaive, reaches into his jacket, and he throws a, uh, and, uh, he throws a trio of daggers at you, Pluto. Oh, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Getting a 12, a 15, and a 15 to hit. Yeah, they all miss. Okay. I, I absorb them with my shield. Nice. And there's all these. And and Kresk, or what, Dorag has a big has a big javelin sticking out of him, right? Yeah. And he just keeps walking yeah. at me. Oh, yeah. man, that's not menacing at all. Not at all. Cool. Uh, we go to Sebastian. All right, I need to get out of these tentacles. Yep, make a dexterity saving throw. Four. <laughs> you are restrained by the tentacles, and they begin uh, crushing your limbs and torso, and you take 12 points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Uh, with the rest of my turn, I guess I cry. I whimper. You're just restrained. You can still act. You just can't move. Oh. Yeah, you have disadvantage on attack rolls. Uh, and attacks against you have advantage, but you can still act and move. You're just you just you can still act. You just can't move. Your speed is zero, and if you do make attack rolls, you have disadvantage. Well, my my panic reaction is Sebastian to cry. <laughs> <laughs> my panic reaction is yeah, Sebastian it was to cry. <laughs> Sebastian starts crying and yells, "Oh God, I don't want anybody to see this!" And um, he casts darkness using sorcery points on himself. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd is confused and uh yeah that's that's what he does all right we go to the top of the round with Veo. all right uh i'm gonna stay where i am but i'm gonna still take some shots at the big guy okay with my long mm-hmm. bow oh nope seven <laughs> seven <laughs> whoops <laughs> Veo, come on. 15? That will hit. The yes. 15 will hit. The 7 Big will guy. not. <laughs> Big guy. Uh, nope. Okay. 21 damage. Cool. Nice. Seems like in the midst of his blood curdling rage, he is supernaturally resilient. Hmm. Makes sense. That's great. <laughs> um, at least to physical damage. That's great. Veo, anything else? Nope. 
Nope. Okay. I'm stay where I am. So now we go to Fazama. Oh, man. Cool. Um, so she continues to uh, focus on her Ivard's black tentacles. Um, but she steps for she steps forward teleporting 30 feet across the acid pool. I thought she was going to step into the acid pool. I was like, oh, if she, she wants to. She walks acid. <laughs> um, and then she... Um... Uh, and then she casts Eldritch Blast on... Sebastian. Disadvantage. No, because she can see in magical darkness. <laughs> Man. Getting a... At least I don't see it. Yeah. Getting a 25 to hit. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, dealing 7 force damage. And then her second beam is another 25 to hit. Well, two 19s. Uh, for another eight force damage. She fires the bolts of Eldritch energy towards you. Good. I, uh, you just hear screaming from inside this ball of darkness. <laughs> Ow! Yep. And she, she cackles out, I'm so sorry the crowd can't see this. It's wonderful. <laughs> there are tentacles holding Pluto, me while I'm getting you're blasted. Up. Um, when I... This is this is more of a mechanic. Do I can I move on the diagonal at the same speed? Um, on the on the we don't don't worry about the squares because we use true movement. So you can just you like you can go however far the actual measurement says you can. One inch one inch is five feet. And uh, can I make it up to her, Phasma? Because he's he's out of range of me. Big guy. He's throwing whips at me. But can I run past him, Sebastian? Can I make it to her? I think you can with 30 feet of movement. Yeah. I run at her, pointing my sword at her, mm -hmm. and I just start wailing on her. Push her cool. That's it. <laughs> and I, I yell a fierce Caspian battle cry. So you are leaving the reach of uh, Dorag, who's going to get an opportunity to oh, okay. against you. Okay, I'll let him. I let him. He gets a 13 to hit. Miss. He sweeps his chains as, as you run away, but. Uh, he manages, but you but it misses. Yeah, uh, I precision strike for sixteen. That hits for uh, twelve damage. Okay. Concentration check. Concentration check. Succeed. Ah. I hit her again. Uh, a twenty-two to hit for eleven damage. Okay. And I'm going to. Um, what's it she called? She makes her concentration check. I'm going to do a uh, uh, distracting strike on her to do another five damage. And so the next attack is with advantage. And then I'm going to shove her into the acid. <laughs> okay, yeah. go for it. <clears throat> uh, 17. 17. She gets a nine. <laughs> <laughs> so you so clock shove her, her into back the acid. into the acid. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give her a dexterity saving throw to catch herself. Which she fails. <laughs> so you <laughs> clock her back into the acid, uh, and she takes another 10 points of acid damage. Sizzle. Keeps her concentration. Uh, <laughs> I went for it. Uh, she's got us. Okay. And I'm just going to start smashing her in the head in the acid. <laughs> yes, okay, Pluto. so you, uh, do you have enough movement to get up to her, though? Because you pushed her. Oh, down. maybe I don't. Yeah, you don't. Okay, sorry. I won't. Do you want, so want an action surge or not? No. Okay. I'm just going to stand yeah. over her yeah. laughing. Kelly, just move him back to where he was. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, That's I okay. forgot I shoved her. So now we go to Krusk. Um, Krusk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get her. Okay. Krusk rushes forward towards Veo, in a, makes a beeline for Veo, and throws three daggers at her. Stop throwing daggers. Uh, I'm going to give you plus two AC because of the cover, Sweet. but he still gets a 17 and a 25 Both hit. Uh, and a nine. Nope. Okay. 
So that's going to be uh, he, you find two daggers find their purchase, uh, and you take a total of thirteen points of piercing damage. Pierced. Cool. <laughs> I've been pierced. One through my ear. Um, and Dorag's going to go and bull rush Pluto into the ass. <laughs> Come oh. get me. Come get me, you big savage. <laughs> and he basically ta- me. takes the chain and tries to sweep. Basically, he tries to sweep it up, launching you into the acid. Uh, excuse you. Uh, so, um, he gets a uh, nineteen to hit. Uh, yeah. It's gonna deal twelve points of bludgeoning damage, and now we're gonna uh, now make a strength saving throw. Come on, Pluto. Uh, nineteen. Nineteen, cool. You he, he, you don't get knocked over by the by the chains. Oh thank goodness. <laughs> um, but uh, you still take the damage. Cool. I accept. Oh, Sebastian, you are up, sir. Trying to escape those tentacles. Okay, you take, uh, you take six damage from the tentacles at the start of your turn, and you can and you're going to spend your action to escape. I have to. Okay, can you teleport? Not mm, worth it. Yeah. Okay. Um, last turn when I when I rolled to save, I still got to do an action. Yeah. You. Uh, it's when you start your turn to see if you're trapped. But now that you're trapped, you have to use your action to break uh, it. Mm. Yeah. Or I can. Ah, uh, she's burning in the acid. She'll die. I'm gonna try to escape. Okay. That's more like it. Uh, Nineteen. Nice. You do. So now you can move to get out. It is difficult ground, so it is half your speed. And I do need a concentration check for the darkness, because you did take six damage. Twenty-two. You're good. Nice. Anything else, Sebastian? Nope. I'm just going to run off to the side, and I'm hiding and cowering in my ball of darkness, (laughs) as I do. Cool. We go to the top with... uh, Bail. So I want to shift around maybe about probably five feet so I can just kind of poke around the uh, flaming flame. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I... Um, is it disadvantage if I try to hit the, the woman? Yes, She's she down. is in the pool. So, so she actually, from where you are, mm-hmm. because she just got knocked into the pool, pool of acid, you would oh, need to be sorry. right up to okay. the acid to see her. I'll still take some shots at the big guy. Okay. Um, I wanted her in the acid. I saw the opportunity. 15? We all did. that hits. Yes. Nice, Veo. Eighteen damage. Oh. And take another shot. Fourteen. To hit. Yes. That hits. Nineteen damage. Oh, Is that gosh. the big guy? Yeah. Yeah. That nice. those two shots leave him bloodied. Yes. And he screams out flailing the chains all around him. Make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm rounding him up. Uh, 17. Um, as he whips the chains around him, you manage to dive out of the way narrow, narrowly uh, oh. as, as his rage just explodes out around him. And I'm going to move as far in the corner as possible. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. So, Veo, you move into the corner. (laughs) This is how we get to it. I shouldn't have moved. (laughs) It's the spikes. Oh, it's something else. Oh, no, it's something worse. (laughs) The wall falls away, revealing a giant engine filled with spikes um, that pushes its way out of the walls uh, uh, at you, and you can make a dexterity saving throw. 18. Okay, so the the spikes run along the wall beside the door. Kelly? Yep. No, other way. Right, it's right on Veo's space. And turn them around the other way. Yeah. No, no, no. Out facing towards me. No, the spikes are coming towards me. Oh. Yeah. And then in the corner. Like right off. Yeah. And so Veo is pushed out. So Veo, you make your dexterity saving throw. Yeah. But you can choose where you want to land now. You just have where you land. You'll land prone. Um, can I land beside it? Can I like yeah. jump out of the way where Kay. I was? Yeah. Okay. 
So it fires out from the wall and starts move, moving along the edge, and it moves 30 feet forward. Oh, like it shoots? Yeah, it's moving along. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> ah! Yeah. <laughs> and then the wall closes back up again. Okay. Uh, next up is uh, Sama, who is in the acid. So she's going to cast Misty Step again to teleport back out of the acid. Does she take any acid damage for starting her turn in there? She does. She acid, takes 10 points. Acid, she is acid, really acid, beat up. Acid. Concentration? Acid, acid. She's going to let it drop. Yeah! Oh. I wasn't in it anymore, but... No, I know, but no. And then she fires Eldritch Blasts at Pluto. Uh Uh-oh. Getting a 16 and an 18 to hit. Uh, The 18 hits. Uh, For eight points of force damage. Ow. I, force. That hurt. I, st- I absorb with the shield, but it, it like it yeah. like knocks into me. Pluto, you're up. Uh oh. Um. What? How 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 big is the pool of acid? Far? Uh, directly ahead of you, it's twenty feet wide. Uh oh. <laughs> Did I go for it? <laughs> um. We I, we got to kill someone. I turn around and face the obvious. Ogre target. Cool. And I'm going to start wailing on him now. Then I go, my blade seeks blood. Oh, and I'm going to um, 16. That hits. So I precision strike that one for uh, it was a 2-9 damage. He loves it. (laughs) Oh. And then um, I'm going to hit him. Your blade cuts deep into him, but it's like he isn't fully feeling pain. Ah! I'm going to hit him again. Uh, uh-oh. Six. 12 to hit? That hits. Oh my gosh. Um, for 13, and then I'm going to do uh, strength save. He gets a natural 20. <laughs> oh my so gosh. So 24. Okay. Um... Uh, and he takes an extra five damage. Okay. So what I try to trip you, what, him. You try to trip him? And it didn't work. Can't trip a tripper. And then I'm going to push him. Uh, I'm going to try to knock him prone with my... with my uh, Opposed athletics checks? He gets another natural 20. I get a 19. <laughs> oh, is it athletics or just strength? It's athletics. I get a 19. Uh, he get, Yeah, he gets a 24. <sighs> yeah, he just stands as a root, uh, irresolute, <laughs> I frothing hit him with at my the shield and I just you. look yeah. up and he doesn't move. I go, yeah. how? <laughs> oh, and I'm, yep. Yep. Okay. Krusk. Yep. Krusk rushes forward across the pool and tries to pull vault. Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star. We're good? Nice. And landing beside the prone Vale, hmm. dropping his glaive down upon her. <laughs> no, Vale! Uh, he gets a 12 to hit, uh, sorry, a 13 to hit. Nope. And a four, 14. Wow. <laughs> Can't roll above 10 with I'm advantage. Rolling. Yeah, rolling. so you just roll like, out ah, of the way. Ah. Yeah, as he leaps across. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Nice moves, Vale. Uh, and. Dorag smashes down into Hi. Uh, into Paluto once again bringing his overhead chain smash getting a 12 to hit as it comes down and you just ta- break it away with the shield um, a man- managing to avoid the blow entirely Whew. Nice. Yeah, we're, we're locked in combat Sebastian you're up did Pluto yell for help? I did. <laughs> uh, Sebastian, hearing Pluto yell, help! runs over and he's going to cast. So nobody can see what he's doing, but all of a sudden, out of the ball of darkness, beams of energy start shooting at the big guy. It's just a big floating ball of darkness shooting fire. 
All right, so I'm going to cast Scorching Ray. Do it. First one gets... 22. That hits. And that is 2d6. I have him distracted. Oh, yeah, I also have advantage. And Elven Accuracy. Check for that crit. Go for cool. those crits. That's good. That's eight damage. Okay. Second shot. A uh, crit. Woo! Nice. Yeah. I don't know why I'm going to roll crit. that one again. <laughs> Double crit. Okay, Double crit. roll the critical damage. Uh, oh. 16. The blast of flame <laughs> comes roaring out of the darkness and strikes Dorag in the back, slaying him. How does it go down? Woo! So I as he's wailing on help. Pluto and Pluto <laughs> yells for help, I... Uh, this ball of darkness emerges from around the corner and you hear nobody touches my friends and then these beams start blasting into his back and it actually like disintegrates his back so that you can see all of the muscle and his spine and the everything. first shot does that the second shot hits him in the spine and just with this roar it like splits his torso into this burning like blown out mass and this 600 pound ogre just drops in a heaping charred mass of flesh in front of Paluto's feet and the crowd just screams that was amazing blood blood barbecue (laughs) and then Pluto's surprised face I lock eyes with him and wink you have one more scorching ray shot he can't see it because I'm in darkness (laughs) yeah because I'm I'm like (laughs) Um, so I'm gonna shoot at um Phasma Shooter in this. What's my range? That? Yeah, that's one twenty. Yeah, should, yeah, you should be. Good. Should be good. <laughs> that that was a bad dice. <laughs> um, twenty two. That hits. Eight damage. <laughs> it kills her too. Yes. yes! Yes! So after he disintegrates and like burns up and I attempt to wink at Pluto, I notice her behind him getting ready with like a spell and I just like aim and it goes right over Pluto's shoulder and smashes her in the face, burning off. She's wearing like a skull helmet. Yeah, and you can't tell that she's not wearing a skull helmet because now she's permanently wearing a skull helmet. (laughs) It blows the helmet away and just leaves like the seared, bleached bone underneath. Good night. Nice. Nice. With that, we go to the top of the round with Veo. So I use my movement to get up out of prone position. (laughs) And... I didn't roll my concentration when I got hit on Zephyr Strike. Okay. I'm going to roll it now. Just to make sure. Um, what am I rolling? Oh, 14. Against my... Is it save DC? Against the damage. Oh. Oh, crap. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so... Um, and now I'm just going to move away from him for opportunity attacks back to the flaming flame. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to take my longbow and I'm going to shoot him. Nice. 21. That hits. <laughs> oh. Wrecked. 16. Ugh. And then a 20 to hit. That hits as well. 16. Those two shots leave him bloodied. Okay. With Pazama dead, we go to Paluto. I retrieve my javelin from the corpse of the berserker ogre, and I just start calmly walking over, and I just line up the throw, and I just huck it right at... Nice. At, uh, and I get a couple of, like, get the crowd getting into it. Uh, 27. That hits. <laughs> For uh, uh, 10 damage. Stick him with the pointy end! <laughs> So I just huck this javelin at him. Yeah, it hits him and it like partially impales him and he's kind of stumbling forward and he lurches forward towards Veo. Do you want to do anything else? Uh, and No, I'm too far away. He lurches forward to Veo. I'll take you down with me! You can try. Um, getting a 22 to hit. Yes. Uh, for 10 points of damage. 
Ouch. As he stumbles towards, do you want to move him right up to Veo? Sebastian, you're up. I'm just like, stop following me. <laughs> um, oh, wait. I'm going to just keep blasting. So I, uh, I throw out my finger guns and I shoot a firebolt at him. Cool. Bam. With advantage. There's another crit. crit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Worth it. Yes. On the skull splitter dice. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Skull splitter crit. And that's going to be... 2d10. 12 damage. Uh, crit. Oh, right. <laughs> Just overkill it. Overkill. Overkill. 20 damage. There is no kill like overkill. <laughs> As the blackened, fiery mess of his flesh slips into the acid and is decayed away. Yeah, as he as he drives his uh, weapon into Veo, he just explodes with fire. <laughs> nice. Did I do that? You killed everything. Am I with magic? Fire. Um, <laughs> and I'm just like, the how crowd did that happen? applauses, and the Queen of Thieves cries out, "Quite the explosive finish! Well done." Good pun. Um, and as as you you do so, um, the doors open and blackjack mel runs out onto the field and's like yeah i discovered them all that was me aren't they awesome i'm really okay with mel and um and the queen of thieves says big linda's been waiting for a worthy foe i hope you're ready uh, before we delve into the ruins again, a big thank you to Axe and Shield for providing us with the awesome gaming accessories that you see, such as the Initiative Tracker, tracker. Uh, which is very handy. He also makes flight stands and many other things. He has a Kickstarter coming up soon, so check it out. Some very exciting stuff there. Uh, also, a big thank you to Tabletop Audio, whether you're hunting uh, ogres in an arena or in a dungeon or on a mountain. You can trust Tabletop Audio to bring you the best ambient music. We use it every time. We have great playlists. It's free on tabletopaudio.com. But Check it's it got to be ogres. But it's got to be ogres or <laughs> trolls <laughs> or another uh, monster I've murdered. <laughs> Finally, thanks to 100 Years Boar for the amazing voiceover in our intro video. Check them out here streaming on Twitch. If you're enjoying the stream and you want to support our work, check out our Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. We have a truly phenomenal Discord community available exclusively to our patrons where you can discuss role-playing games, the latest episode of Drakenheim or our show, or just have fun chatting with us about your favorite geeky topics like we've been talking about Endgame and Game of Thrones Season 8 and all that fun stuff, so... Join us on there if you're if you're interested. You can become a patron of our show and chat with us. Have fun. And uh, as always, tonight's episode of Dungeons of Dragon I'm sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. They sent us these fantastic collection of premium metal dice for mm-hmm. us to use at our game. Some great crits tonight. Uh, yeah, there's been oh, a lot yeah. of crits tonight. Thank so you. Uh, thank you, Skull Splitter, for <laughs> giving us crits. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, if you uh, want to get a set for yourself, head on over to SkullSplitterDice.com. Be sure to use the discount code DDUDES at checkout to save 15% on your first order. With that, let's return to the ruins. And specifically, the ruined and broken bodies of the competition. As the (laughs) arena changes over, several dwarves with broomsticks come out. And they start pushing with the broomsticks the corpses into the acid. <laughs> it's so oh, smart. It's a key cleanup tool. It's so smart, guys. Um, as uh, as Blackjack Mel comes out and says, "That was amazing! You totally blew those guys up." Yeah, thanks, well, Mel. Do you look think it's it, a good show? I thought it was amazing. I even look it. I placed a couple bets on the side. They kind of came in, and I brought this for you. And he produces this jar of what looks like a disgusting paste. It kind of looks like some form of a combination of like a meat or vegetable slurry. Yeah, and you have that reaction when he opens opens it up. <laughs> he's, he's like, I know it smells bad, but you you kind of got hurt. You just kind of rub it inside the wound. I promise it won't cause an infection. Inside. I immediately start rubbing it. Because I trust Blackjack Mel with my life. BJM, me and him go... Can I do a medicine check on it first? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Eight. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, I tried to figure out too. It's some kind of magic. You just kind of rub it on the wound, and it looks like it kind of turns into skin. It's it's really thing. weird, but it works real good. I take it's some bl- and I just like blackjack Mel's cure all. <laughs> Put it on the yeah. stab wounds that I have. Yeah. I'm like rubbing it all over my entire body. <laughs> it smells disgusting, but it works. It tastes disgusting, but it works. Um, it is. Uh, it Should is. Should I be eating it? For <laughs> no. Don't ingest it. <laughs> you force. Yeah. Your you mouth. Go, don't don't eat it. Don't eat it. Please, please. <laughs> Spit it but out. But I bit my tongue. What does it do? <laughs> it's not to be taken orally. <laughs> um. So he he hands you the jar. Um, and we devour it, it. In, in, inside it. There's five doses inside. Um, and if you use a dose, you regain 18 hit points. Uh, and it also cures poison and disease. Each one dose. There's five. You there's five another. doses. There's enough for five doses. You take another. I I'm I'm pretty good right now. I I need add? another. Mm, I guess I'm who not needs who needs two and who needs one. I think I need two. I I'm still in pretty rough shape. I do you only, need another one, Vale? Five <laughs> he's, more he's hit points. You all like reaching into the pot. He's like, whoa, whoa! You're using it all. Oh, oh. I think well, let's keep one. Yeah, let's save one. Save uh, some yeah, for later. Two, two. I'll I, put it on We my... both had one, and then Vale's got it. What are we calling it? It is a restorative ointment. You can find it in D and D Beyond. Oh, sweet. It, and now the, we're scraping the, the bottom. The of proper the... name for it is this unpronounceable thing. It's like. Kale Gotham's ointment. Can it just be BMJ's miracle miracle, <laughs> miracle cream? Cure all, yeah, <laughs> BJ Mills cure all Ke- cure all paste. Kale Gotham's ointment. Yeah, and it's it's written like in the block letters, and it's like got like a tape. It says not for eating. <laughs> Rub in wound. <laughs> they had to put a specific picture, like a silhouette of uh, Sebastian, and a big circle with a line through it of him eating a big ball of paste. <laughs> It says no. You guys want to know why I was kicked out of the Amethyst Academy? It was for eating paste. <laughs> for eating paste. <laughs> the bane it's of believable. many a promising student. <laughs> you eat magic right. paste? Magic paste. That's how I got these powers. <laughs> that's not true. None of that's none of that's true. Don't that's eat canon. the paste. No, don't 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 th- <laughs> <laughs> don't look at that. That's all. It's all, With it's all that. fun. L- l- listen, um, you did really good. I I I hope Big Linda doesn't uh, doesn't turn you into hamburgers. Is Big Linda like what are we talking? Another ogre with chains? I just know she's big. That's all. Bigger than this guy? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Physically big, or is it that oh, yeah. her ego? <laughs> Probably both. But I mean, you know, it's been impressive. It's been really good knowing you. And no, back, back I hope <laughs> I, I hope Mel. at least one of you survives. That would be nice. All three Aww. of us. I'll see you later. Uh, bye, bye, Mel. I guess. Uh, and 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 as he bows, he's like, uh, my, your your Majesty, the Queen, Blackjack Mel. I represent them. I found them. They're great. I hope they do. I hope their deaths is as entertaining for you as it is for all of us here. Mel. <laughs> Mel, tell them our name. Uh, they they are. Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> Dr- Draken. I think we're gonna go with Draken Force now. Draken Force. Uh, they're calling themselves Draken Force now. They they see Draken Force, and the the crowd is like, golf clap. Yeah, thank you. And we killed all those people. Remember, <clears throat> Blackjack <laughs> Mouse scurries off as the Queen of Thieves says. Well, good job. I'm impressed. You ready for what's next? Come on, Queen. What's the worst that could happen? No. Why did you do that? No. <laughs> Bring out Big Linda. Bring out Big Linda. And you can hear the sound of like a gate opening beyond the waterfall behind the cave. And you can hear this big stomping sound coming forward. I'm really scared. <laughs> don't, don't tell anybody. <laughs> don't tell anybody what. Um, Nothing. See and my, my ears go says, down, but I'm still in a fighting position. To all my loyal subjects, 
and to all those who died bringing in Big Linda, the prize of my collection. Let's have some fun because we have a T-Rex. What did she just say? What is that? What's a... Quick, into your... Legends speak of an ancient creature and we found it mutated and disgusting in Drakenheim. I present to you Big Linda. Oh what? Definitely physically big. Oh my As God. coming through the archway is a massive reptilian creature, a Tyrannosaurus Rex. But it's it appears to if you look closely at it, it almost looks like it's a bit of an amalgam of of other lizards because its body is covered in the smaller eyes and mouths of smaller lizards that have all like melded into the flesh of this creature as its eyes glow purple and its mouth drips with octarine goo. Um, and it huffs forward and like there's a shower of, uh, fl- of haze and mist around it as it enters into the arena. It is this massive bipedal Tyrannosaurus Rex with tiny little arms and a massive mouth that could swallow you whole. As it comes into the room, you can see that there is a set of manacles on its feet that have been detached, and it seems like it's chewing on someone that might have been keeping it back there. (laughs) At least it's been fed. And as it comes into the arena, it howls out, And the Queen of Thieves says, Dinner served. Pluto, get Pluto her. for initiative. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Big Lynn is a lot bigger than I thought. And she rolled a one on initiative, right? <laughs> Love that. Big Linda is a legendary creature and has se- uh, several additional points as well. I get a ten for Big Linda. Using 16. my oh, animal 18. handling. <laughs> Pluto? Uh, oh, uh, 18. 18? 12. Okay, so you all go first, and then... Show me what you got. Uh, who goes first? You can go first. Uh, yeah. Unless you want me to go first. No, I think that's better. Okay. This hulking in her face. beast. Not in her face. Just stomps <laughs> forward. <laughs> <It> might. <laughs> <laughs> And the crowd is silent. Like they, people are petrified, and like a bunch of people are, are crouching behind. But um, so, uh, so a few people say, "Get her! <laughs> Get her! <laughs> you can do it!" Are they cheering for us? There's a few people that say that, and they're like, and others say, "Eat them! Eat them! Get them!" <laughs> it seems like many of the the thieves are too scared to even look upon this horrific creature. Pluto, you're up. You are up. You got this, man. I retrieve my my uh, spear from uh, what's his face, Halberd dude. <laughs> yeah, that's how forgettable he was. And <laughs> <laughs> just like you're gonna be big, Linda, and I just kind of and then I just I I kind of do a slow run, and then I start speeding up, and I'm just gonna run at Big Linda. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited <laughs> right now. I leap into the air, and I just and I just go right for like right under the mouth, right under the Kay. jaw, and um, roll to hit. <laughs> I need I need a I need drawing. Uh, I crit. I drawing. <laughs> what? <laughs> so worth it. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> uh, nine. Sebastian has hearts for eyes. Uh, right Sixteen now. damage. 16 damage. And I'm going to do um, a, uh, a distracting strike. Okay. And she takes another two damage. Okay. And then I'm going to hit her again. Da, 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 da. Actually, I'm going to leave the spear in her, and then I'm going to pull up my sword <coughs> and swing it down on her. So you leap into the air, spear her in the, in the front of the shoulder, draw the sword, swipe at her. 14. That is a miss. It does not penetrate oh. through her thick reptilian hide. Ah, clang! And then uh, I'm going to try to knock her over. 
<laughs> Wait, can I even do I that? I think she is a huge creature. I think you can only use it up against large. Can I even can I even slam her with the old Yeah, with the shove they can only be up to one size bigger bigger than you. Bum er okay. Okay. Um and then I now I regret. Okay. <laughs> As you land and swipe at her, she spends her first legendary action to swipe you with her tail. Getting a tw- 29 to hit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Does yeah. it hit? Uh, yeah. The tail I'm so slams <laughs> into you, uh, dealing 21 points of bludgeoning oh, damage. Oh, gosh. <laughs> And make a strength saving throw. Ow! Guys, are we okay? <laughs> I was so confident. I'm like, haha! Uh, I get a 14. You are knocked prone and roll a d6 to deter- and multiply it by 5, and that's how many squares you sent- are sent flying. <laughs> that's the coolest thing. Um, two. Two? So you're thrown back 10 feet and knocked prone. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I land into her, and I'm like, she yeah. just swings the tail. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's so cool. Bail, you're up. Right. I just went from so excited to like so terrified. <laughs> um so I'm just like, oh <laughs> and I start shooting arrows at the uh Tyrannosaurus Rex. I am cowering now. <laughs> <laughs> um Okay. Uh you get your first one's advantage. Because I did the distracting. Okay. I distracted her. See, I distracted her with getting hit by a tail. <laughs> um, ten. The a- arrow goes completely wide. I'm a bit scared. My aim is off. Take my second shot. <laughs> Fourteen. Bounces right off her thick scales. My last. Oh. Um... 23. You find purchase with one shot. 100 damage. 100 damage. 100 damage. 100 damage. damage. You can do it. Hold on. It's close. 27 damage. Wow! Way to go. And with that, my feline agility kicks in. (laughs) More by nature than choice. And I start to weave around the spikes and back behind the flamey flame. (laughs) You can go pretty far, I can go pretty far. (laughs) I think I can go 80 feet. Cool. And I mean like right behind. (laughs) I don't even want to look at it. (laughs) Okay. Oh, um... And I want to use, actually, my cunning action is my bonus action. Mm-hmm. Um, can I hide? Uh, you can try. I want to try to hide. Okay. What do I roll? Is it stealth? Mm-hmm. 22. Cool. You are you are hidden from <gasps> wherever it might be. Yay! Cool. <laughs> so, so, so is it me? It is. <clears throat> so Sebastian just saw Pluto get knocked back on his on his butt, and he's looking at him. He's like, "Oh God!" And then he saw some arrows fly, and he's like, "Good job!" Oh, you're gone. <laughs> and he looks around, and he's just alone there. Uh, uh finger guns. Uh, I'm gonna cast Scorching Ray as a third level spell. Ooh, that gives me four beans. All right, and I just start blasting at this Ooh. thing. 20. That hits. 10 damage. Fourteen. Deflected from the her reptilian scales. Oh, Third tough. beam. Nineteen. Is a hit. Seven more damage. Okay. Last beam. Oh god. Nope. That's a 10. I go wide. I shoot wide. That was a warning shot. (laughs) Okay. She spends her next legendary action to move. (laughs) 
Hello. And she rushes forward in between the two of you towards you, Sebastian. She, her movement's 50 feet. Do I get a free hit on her? Uh, I think she's big enough that she stays in your reach as she moves forward. I, I try to swing wildly at okay. her from my... <laughs> from from. <laughs> well, I crit miss. Okay. I'm still five feet, ten feet away I start, from her. I just swing at her and That's I miss. That's not going to be good enough. Oh, God. So I, okay. I'm backing up as she's like running towards me and I'm just like stepping backwards. Cool. Uh, and as she, she steps forward, um, she kind of, she lumbers forward on her turn and she kind of, you see her like, look like she's almost like choking up a hairball. Uh, um, what? Where are my spell templates? I have a few here. Down them. Um, oh God! Um, this as she horfs up a cloud of toxic, delirious goo forward. Oh, no, no. Does that include the queen? It angles down because they're forty feet up. Fair, right? She horfs it forward, and the two of you can make dexterity saving throws. Good. 19. Six. Oh, that went, that, that turned bad. Oh, wow. That's a lot of D6s. <laughs> yep. Ooh. It's 20. 30. 40. 38 points of necrotic and acid damage. No, thanks. And the two flaming uh, platforms are melted away by it. Oh. <laughs> Did I, with a 19? You say, but you still take half damage. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You said 38? Just even remove the bases. They're, they're totaled by it. <laughs> and I'm just standing there in front of her mouth. Yeah. yeah. Looking bad. Cool. Just let me know if we need to get out of here at any point. <laughs> we go to the top of the round with Paluto. Uh, I stand up. Okay. And I yell, hey, Big Linda. I I think the L stands for loser. I ain't done with you. And I... <laughs> <laughs> she just like walked past... Like, she knocked you to the ground, just walked right past you and vomited on some I'm very, I'm very mad at that because that's insulting. Did I'm you a distracting prince. striker? Uh, yeah. Um, not anymore. Oh. I used everything, uh, and I just start. I just start like <laughs> running up and like hitting her in the back. <laughs> I hope not fruitlessly. Uh, Nineteen to hit. That hits nice. for fifteen damage, and uh, uh, thirteen. That's a miss. Yeah. Um, action surge. Just keep nice. wailing, wailing. Uh, another 19 for 14 damage. Nice. And so I'm just hitting her, and I'm hitting her, and then I'm going to use uh, my second wind to get some health back. Cool. And she's going to use her legendary action to slap you with the tail. <laughs> Getting a 27 to hit. That's going to be uh, only 17 points of bludgeoning damage. That's how much I healed. <laughs> <laughs> and make a strength saving throw. Ooh, uh, uh, 22. Okay, you are not knocked prone. <laughs> so she hits me with her tail. <laughs> <laughs> the end. In the face. It would have been funnier if I went flying, but this is more tactical. Vale, you're up. All right, I am going to try to continue to run around, staying close to the edge of the acid pool. Um, I'm going to go 30, yeah. And I want to crouch behind this t tiny piece of rubble. <laughs> and, um, I'm going to take so a couple shots at her. Uh, 12. It's a miss. Mm. It does not penetrate her hide. 15? That does. <gasps> Ooh. Uh, and she's within, is she in five feet of Pluto? So yes, she is. I get my... I'm whacking her. Sneak attack. Uh, 
That was like... <laughs> Twenty-two damage. Nice. That leaves her bloodied. Yes. As, as she howls out in rage, her breath weapon recharges. <laughs> and you can see the huffing and the oozing forth, even as this uh, delirious Icor leaks from the wounds that suffuses her body instead of blood. And she uses her legendary action to tail slap. Sebastian. Oh, no. Oh, no. Getting a 20 to hit. Nah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sebastian, you take 20 points of uh, bludgeoning damage. You can give me a strength saving throw there, buddy. Oh. Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> Nine. Okay. Roll me a d6 to determine how far you are sent flying. One. Okay. So she swings the tail around and smashes you and you are knocked five feet and knocked prone and dying okay mm. sebastian give me that death saving throw nope no okay 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 focus time Pluto, can you get him over to me the what can you get sebastian over to me get him over to you get him uh, to me i don't know we'll meet halfway okay <laughs> I'm worried, Veo. I Big, Linda Big Linda turns towards Veo after taking that critical that that shot, mm -hmm. and she unleashes her breath weapon only Ooh. upon Veo. <laughs> no, Veo, give me a dexterity saving throw. Dodge it. Ten. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna be dead too. <laughs> That's not a very high one. Thank you. <laughs> That's still pretty good, though. Oh. That one's going to be 30 points. Yep. You down? Down! <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Pluto, you're up. Um, All my friends are dying. Uh, I'm going to... I, I, I'm going to address the queen. Enough. Enough. Call off your beast. You can have me, but let my friends live. The, there doesn't... There need, needn't be more bloodshed. Big Linda has proven her worth. These are monsters. These aren't... This isn't a fair fight. We need to... If you really want to challenge us, you'll... You'll send one of your personal... Guard, don't let her eat my friends. <laughs> Big Linda, it's not fair. Please, I beg you. I'm begging for my, my well, friends. Well, crowd, life. he's begging. Shall we let them live or die? I start the chant. Live, live, <laughs> live. Okay. Live. Pluto, give me a persuasion check with advantage. You can do it. 14. 14? Okay. The crowd is mixed <laughs> in, in their response. And the queen turns to uh, the, the creature. And um, she then turns to the old the old woman old beggar mary beside her and she says mary call it off and mary casts charm monster on big linda and the dinosaur stands there agape i rush over to Sebastian cradling his <laughs> You lost one of your ears. Oh no. She says She she points to another and says, "Go get them." Um uh, see their wounds. I I I I drop my weapons and uh and I'm going to give You have a potion on you, right? 
Oh, then I don't know. <laughs> I give um, Sebastian one of his own potions, and then I, I immediately run over to Veo to uh, do the same. Give you a potion? Yeah. You have one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and... Uh, Pluto's torn. He... W defeat wasn't on the table, but... You know, a planned retreat is probably the best strategy. Big Linda. Mm. Big Linda just had her way. <laughs> Big L. I think I, I I just fall to my knees in front of the queen. Cool. A few of the queen's ogres come out and collect and stabilize Sebastian and Veo. Um, and the queen says... Folks, I give you my champion, Big Linda. Let this be a reminder to all of you. Even these heroes that have given us so much trouble so far, bow down before the Queen of Thieves. I give a deep bow. As you two get to your feet. I take a knee. I take a knee. Excellent. Now we can start the next steps. Enjoy the blood. I hope you enjoy it. all enjoyed the bloodbath. We'll have Big Linda back next week. <laughs> she says, as the... Um, as old beggar Mary steps out into the field and waves her hand to big to big Linda and motions her back into the cave this small frail older woman with her eyes glowing with magic as she pulls the creature back and coaxes it into the cave again I picture as like like the as the T-Rex is walking like the tail's swinging and it doesn't care where it's swinging yeah. so you have to like dodge out of the way of it <laughs> Because it's so big. I'm... They collect you, and they bring you back into the arming room. Ouch. Friends, I'm sorry. Ugh, it... I'm sorry. Yeah. I, 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 I threw myself at the mercy of the queen. I know it's not uh, Dragon Force style, but... Pluto. I was worried I might lose you. You saved us. Yeah. You saved me. And Veo. You <laughs> saved me. I saved you. And Veo. But I and saved me. you. You saved me. I care about you. And Veo. But I care about you. I care about Veo. I care about surviving and, and being alive, so thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, Veo. Yeah. Veo, you're here. You with did us. great. Yeah. We're, I'm hungry. <laughs> Guys, I'm you did great. I'm hungry. I know you are. <clears throat> yeah, where's this? I still have a little bit of bread. Oh, no, no, no. It's very to God. I was. Can I ask if you wanted to split it? It's delicious. As you <laughs> as you eat, right. the Queen of Thieves <laughs> comes down into the into the arming room, and she is beaming. And she says, "Wonderful! I could not have asked for a better display or show if we had planned it directly. You put on all the airs I needed to see from you. You have done so well. Yeah, now, that was all planned." All of the, my men know who's in charge. Had you actually defeated Big Linda, it would have been incredible. But this is far more convenient for keeping control of the mob. So we did good. Well done. I'm yes. in pain. <laughs> I'm in so much pain. It makes it much more convincing. As much as illusions and control are good, they need a little bit of truth to make them truly bite. I guess we should have known what we were getting into when we walked into a battle arena. I guess I shouldn't be surprised that I'm in pain. My life flashed before my eyes, and it was mostly fire and problems. <laughs> Incidents. <laughs> Incidents. It's true. And with a little luck, there'll be a few more incidents before it's all over. I must admit, it would have been nice to see Big Linda 
tear you limb from limb. <laughs> what? But on the other hand, you are useless to me as corpses. Worthless, in fact. If I was going to steal your lives, I would rather spend them dearly first. That makes sense. That's ominous, but it's also like you telling us you care about us, so I appreciate that. It's good math. Do we not get our stuff back? Well, contraire, I think you've earned a grand reward. Everyone was talking about how fearsome you three were, how many of my men you had slain. And by being defeated by my monster in such a public and dramatic way, you prove to the mob that I have control of the situation, which is exactly what they needed to know. You're welcome. So you wanted us to lose. It was all part of the plan. Huh. We knew it all along. <laughs> Where's Mel? Mm. We should have Mel here for our... Uh... He probably owes us some money. <laughs> He's laughing all the way to the bookkeepers. He bet against you. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I'm Good job, Mel. <laughs> Making actually, some money. I'm actually really proud of Mel. Yeah. You made the right call. I'd bet against us too if I had known. Mm. Wow. So, here's where we stand. Well, you barely. I think you're welcome to a little more medical attention once we're done here, but... Oh, thank you. In the meantime, I think we can have a rather profitable partnership, don't you? I think it'd be prof profitable for Drakenheim, potentially. I hope so. We played your game. We fought. We gave the crowd a great show. We need some time to heal. But then we need to get down to down to business. We also do have a date in like two days that we need to make. Right, to. with the Lord of the Feast and the Hooded Lanterns and the Silver Order. Wait, we didn't mention the uh, whatever oh, queen. <laughs> All right, yes. Can we tell her anything? I don't know. We don't have to. Again, I think it's going to be more beneficial for her for us to do it. She <clears> probably <throat> knows my middle name. I never told anybody my middle name. You have a middle name? It's danger. Mm. That's not true. <laughs> I was going to say. It's not true. Incident. At all. Incident. <laughs> so, I will return your possessions to you. I'm keeping the badge no. and the ring, the chest, and the key. You don't keep any of Pluto's stuff. Because my stuff's all worthless. <laughs> I mean... Mm. <laughs> no, I was going to give that armor of yours to Mulg, but you killed him. <laughs> <laughs> She's right, we did. And then we can work together on the next steps. Some of my council members would like to meet with you. They have a few objectives that we can work on together. In the meantime, you have my assurances that none of my people will interfere with Temple Gate or whatever operations you're planning there. That includes not interfering with the Hooded Lanterns or the Silver Order during our attack on Temple Gate. Only during the attack. Fine. I also want to just say, like, just as like a like a s s semantics sort of thing. Technically, you taking our stuff kinda is interfering. Do you play on those technicalities? What if we plan to use the bomb on the Lord of the Feast? So, like, we kind of like so. Really, you kind of are interfering by taking the stuff. That would be a tremendous waste, wouldn't it? Can I have my goggles back? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can have your goggles you. back. These, this weapon, this thing that the Amethyst Academy has created, they're going to make another one. I'm sure they are. I wouldn't doubt <laughs> it. And they'll use them. But they'll be afraid to use one 
if they don't know where one of them is. I actually strangely agree with this. Uh, to have that much power in one group of... Yeah, but we had that power. I know, and now that we don't, you have to accept that we don't. Okay. So, I can understand the arms race that is now being created. How mad do you think they're going to be when we tell them we lost the bomb? If oh, they they'll be furious. Out. Why do we have to tell them? They'll be furious. Yeah, we don't tell them. Don't tell them. Fortunately, it's not your fault. I did it to you. So you can blame me. They're still going to blame us. That's not going to help. They will be. (laughs) But they'll be too worried about what has happened to it to do anything about it. Now, without my father's badge, I am at a disadvantage with this battle. I need the badge back. If you get the badge back, I'm getting the ring back. These things, this badge, this ring, are only the rightful property of those who hold the titles of Drakenheim. And they bar the way to a much bigger prize. You retrieve for me one of the other badges of office of Drakenheim. I will return your father's badge to you in trade. Where can I find these badges? That's your problem. But the Lord Commander has one. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Oh, no. Where Is there... Are how many are there? In the heyday of Drakenheim... The king's small council consisted of an archmage, a steward, the lord commander, the castellan, the high flame keeper, the guildmaster, and the lord mayor. So there's lots up there. Mm -hmm. And finally, the queen's seal. With those nine pieces, we might be able to achieve something very interesting. You mean, get into the castle? More than that. Hmm. Have you tried to go over the walls? Yes. Oh, yeah. Done it. Yeah, it was no problem. You know those beasts that attacked you were not created by the delirium. Those were part of the city. Have you seen that monster in Slaughterstone Square? Yep. That was built by the city, by the people. Are you catching my drift? These, the small council, held the keys to the city. You think they can control? I do. The city? We can control the Slaughter Stone Square corpse collector. And the walls? And the walls. And reclaim Drakenheim. Oh. And right now she's on her way to doing it. No, but she needs us. And I think we need her. This is the best plan I've heard so far. Yeah. Yes, you really should have come to me sooner. Well, if you didn't send people to try to kill us, we might have come to talk to you. We were we got off on the wrong foot with the fact that the first time we ran into your men, they were trying to murder children and old people. <laughs> <laughs> now, just about sh- those goggles. <laughs> just a shrug. Still no. I mean, I don't have them myself right oh. now. <laughs> Hi. I think the only way to go forward is to go with this plan. But, Queen, I need you to know that mm. you preach about freedom, but I feel like I've got a rope around my neck. Freedom isn't free. Seems to be for all your thieves. They pay that price every day in many ways. Many of them never know when the dagger's going to hit them in the back. 
or when they're going to be the one at the wrong end of a blade. But they fight for their freedom. I'm just keeping a little bit of collateral so that I know that you fight with me. Do you have any idea where we could find any of these unclaimed badges? We know that the Lord Commander has one, hmm. but is there any that are unreachable for you? I have my suspicions. The Castellan of St. Selina's Abbey. No one knew what happened to him. But now that crazy cult controls St. Selina's. The High Flamekeeper. Where was she? Dead in the cathedral, perhaps? The Archmage? Dead in the Mage Tower? Who knows? The Lord Mayor? The Guildmaster? Are there corpses still in the Grand Guildhall? I'm not in the business of risking my own life, you must understand. And, well, my thugs and thieves are competent, and I have some excellent agents. I don't think I have anyone that would have lasted two rounds with Big Linda. This is true. Well... I don't disagree with the mission she's giving us. We're a... Collecting the badges... We probably needed to do it anyways. We just now have the information. I don't mind aligning ourselves, at least for now. I am so confused. But, I mean, you mentioned the cathedral. We are going to go there anyway, so it's not like we can't take a gander around to see if there are more. And our goal was to get in before everybody else. Well, if when you go to the cathedral, if you find the body of the High Flame Keeper and retrieve her phylactery, I will trade that for your father's badge. And if you would like to s kill two birds with one stone, perhaps you could bring me the Lord Commander's pendant as well. I'll see we'll what I can do. What about the whereabouts of Oscar Yorn? We have business, and I hope that he's not an agent of yours because our business is... Uh, Unfinished? I, I have a contract that I need to fulfill. When my little birds find me where he is, you will be the first to know. How will you get a hold of us? Probably in person. Do we have like a secret handshake or something for you to tell us that you're you? Because you can be anyone. You can literally be anyone. We what? have like a we have a thing where we say pork chops. Pork and chops. That means that mm -hmm. like I know. Just fit pork chops into the the verbiage, and we'll know it's you. Most of my other. My other followers know me by this face. Oh, okay. So Is that your true face? <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing too. Uh. <laughs> oh, so it's the woman in red that we saw in the first... I'm nothing. I'm no one. Who I am is not as important as what I am. Don't forget that. What are you? I'm quicker than thought. <laughs> I'm more silent than contemplation, and I'm more slippery than a fading memory, and more unshakable than a guilty conscience. I can fulfill your wildest dreams, or I can be your worst nightmare, and I look forward to working with you. Yes, we will work with you. <laughs> Not looking forward to it, but... I think we're on the same path towards a, a similar a goal. I look forward to it, too. We fight in the name of the queen. I do fight in the name of the queen. You do, Veo. Mm -hmm. And I do, too. Oh, and <clears throat> do me a favor and don't dispel the Lord Commander's paranoias about my animosity towards your little prize. That's a very useful distraction to have in play. Uh, oh, but the bomb? No. No? I'm uh, talking about Lenore. Oh. Wait, what? Uh, I made so sure not to mention that. Yeah, but she already knew her about her. Remember? The land you know, we were thing? worried. To be perfectly frank, I don't care. She's a monster now. 
No one will ever take her claim seriously. What about what about the other children of of Lenore? What do, do you, what do you know about them? No children. There are no children. She, no, they're, they're not dead. children anymore. What? I mean, it was 15 years ago. They're all grown up now. Yeah, where are they? Do you know? Maybe. If we get you another badge, will you tell us? You're what going you to know? have to do a little bit better than that. I know many secrets. And for every badge you bring me, I'll give you a secret. Better deal than the demon was giving us. <laughs> yeah. Gives a question. Yeah, I, yeah that's a huge. Yeah, you wanted like our souls and stuff. <laughs> yeah. At least she just wants us to like go on a collection mission. Yeah, mm, we could even go back to the demon. Go to all the tourist attractions in Drakenheim, collect souvenirs, and bring them back to her. Just a bunch of. We're just collecting badges. Yeah, it's like Pokemon. Exactly. I don't know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Oh, it's either. where you go and you capture monsters. You poke men with your Isn't that with what my we spear. do? <laughs> but I we poke men. instead of catching them, we just <laughs> kill them. Yeah, we kill monsters. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. 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 Like, I like this. Mm. <laughs> Gotta kill them all. <laughs> Gotta kill them all. I have many answers, and I know many secrets. I don't know all of them, but I'd be surprised. I feel like you're at least the most willing to bargain with us for information. Of course. There's profit in it, isn't there? Can I ask you a question? What did what did you do before the meteor fell? I'm guessing lawyer. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with you worked with your hands, like a mason. Feo, do you have a guess? <sighs> Actor. <laughs> That's actually probably, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's probably the better guess. Maybe I'll tell you someday. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, she's a lawyer. Well, I think I'm ready for a nap. Yeah, can can we like can we stay safe? Can we stay can, over? Okay. But can like, we sleep over? Not in chains. Certainly. Yes. I owe you that much at least. Sweet. Thank you. And about my goggles. <laughs> Please give us his goggles back. Look how an ogre his comes head comes into the room with a large satchel that has the re- the the remains of your belongings, and another satchel that is brimming with gold. How much gold? Do yeah. we get our original gold back as well? Um. No, all all your gold. The queen laughs. I'm sorry, lies in the seat took that. Where are they? They uh, they did a very good job bringing them to me. I can't deny them a good reward. They did an excellent, excellent job. I feel like I'm going to lose this out on true. this. It was because I drank the milk. I but there is a bag milk. containing 500 gold pieces for each of you. Yeah, I dropped. That's okay. That's better than zero. I got more. Do you want the difference between my gold and... No. We each, we're even. We're all even. Consider it a professional advance. If you like the look of that, there's more of that, too. <laughs> he did it! The quest is over. Oh. We can all go home. Mm. I'm going oh, back to Emberwood Village. I got my bracers back. Yes! Oh. Yay, boom. <sighs> That's my, more uncomfortable. My HP is so low. <laughs> I mean, my. I feel weaker than normal. Everything's heavy. Everything is heavy. The air is heavy. <laughs> You're wheezing. My body is heavy. <laughs> you may. You look good, kid. My associates will lead you to a chamber where you can rest. This location here is secret. So we are going to secret you out of it. Okay. When you wish to leave. Blindfold us and That's turn fair. us around and 
take us in different directions. Although we we know like half of the way to get here. Yeah. I don't think I want to go that way again. Oh, through the the corpse pits? <laughs> no. Okay. With that, the Queen of Thieves leads you to the takes her leave, and a few of the others, um, she comes away, and the two of the the uh, the ogres from before, big ugly, come in, give you back your belongings, and say, "All right, I'll lead you up to the bunks." And and are we are they like can we do our classic sleepover like in the middle of the room where we all have our heads and we're in like a in like the tripod thing we can all hold hands and we're like wow what a day as we sleep <laughs> reflecting she's laying in the room head to head remember that time we fought a T Rex yeah what are they never that, actually it's called a big Linda ah uh, yeah I think we could have taken her give us one more shot we could take her. I wonder if I practice enough if I could turn into a big Linda. She was bleeding. Yep. Thirty hit points left. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you, you. I don't. Uh, no, you could have even you, two big hits. I might not have got her. But it worked out in our favor. Yeah. That's the key thing. If we had killed Big Linda, we might not have gotten what we wanted. I've just never killed a T Rex. No. Never even saw one till today. Yeah. Me neither. That blew my so mind. So I've also never killed one. <laughs> it kept just tail slapping me. <laughs> I have I I look at my my uh, my naked body and it's just I have like, like a giant <laughs> giant bruise. Yeah, <laughs> like it takes up my whole chest. In retrospect, when the when the monster was charging at me, slowly backing up fifteen feet was not the best choice. <laughs> In retrospect, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh. It, it didn't go. You're well. the lawyer from Jurassic Park. Yeah, <laughs> you just hide in the bathroom. I, yeah, you hide in the toilet. I should have climbed up the wall. <laughs> yeah. What a day! But yeah. guys, we well, survive. We're still alive. We're and still now alive. We have to. We we've got the queen. Kind of working. Do you with think us? she's listening to us right now? Probably. Is she in my head? She's uh, She got I in mean, we're, we're still in, in her way. base of operations. Probably so. that creepy guy that came over is probably hanging out outside the door. So as we long as we're plans. here... We can't make any plans. I'm so excited to be working with the Queen of Thieves. She seems like a very good person. Mm. <laughs> what, do we think, what are we supposed to think about? Cats. 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 Watch, she's like not paying attention, and we just fall asleep while <laughs> thinking about cats, 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 trying to avoid detection. <laughs> just think about cats and 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 rainbows and and a bright sunny day. Well, at least we can head back and tell the commander that we, we lost a bomb. Well, we and don't we have haven't to tell found him. Oscar yet. We don't have to tell him anything. Yeah, about the he didn't even know about the bomb. Oh yeah, he didn't. didn't no, he? we just have to tell him that we took care of the queen. River's gonna be mad about the bomb. We don't have to tell River about the bomb either. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to tell we nobody to nothing. Tell. Yeah, we don't have to tell nobody nothing. They have to read our minds to find it out. Exactly. <laughs> That's or the new zone game. of truth. No yeah. more zones of truth. Yeah, we ain't We're playing those games no more. That. Yeah. <laughs> We're done revealing our secrets. Is this what freedom feels like? So before she was right. Freedom isn't free. <laughs> Before the attack on the wall, our mission was to make sure the queen didn't interfere, which we accomplished. She did. And to find Oscar Yorn and bring him back alive, which we was that 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 was like a like a minor. And we still have to meet the cult of the falling fire to see if they will stay out of it. That is true, guys. If we go and do the attack and the queen of thieves doesn't hold her end of the bargain what do we do we well then murder we, her face we call her on it because you know you know what as much as she is the queen of thieves and like shifty i feel like she she could have amongst thieves yeah there is a sense of like i feel like she's the most up that she's the most forward facing of all of them. Yeah, nothing about her, except for the fact that she won't show us. I was about to say, nothing about her seemed deceitful. <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, she has not revealed her true identity. 
but yeah, she she's pretty upfront about her, her intentions. She's told us literally, like, I feel like she's revealed her master plan. She's revealed the most. I still think she's the least trustworthy and honorable out of all of them. But least honorable. Mm, least honorable yes what's that old least saying? trustworthy i find her just as trustworthy as i don't know i can trust her to she was she honored her word when she sent us to fight a t-rex she even spared us when but she also she told us <laughs> she had every opportunity to she kill us that she finds stabbing people in the back respectable <laughs> She, she could stab us in the back at any time and think that's a good thing. She already could have stabbed us in the back a million times. She could have slit her throats when we were passed to, out. Even once. Yeah. She just wants to do she all the dirty work the... and then she's going to try to kill us. Yeah, mm-hmm. but as long as we're doing work for her that falls in line with what we want to do anyways, then it's beneficial. The moment that we have gotten to a point where she's like, now I will rule Drakenheim, then we murder her. Okay. Yeah, so let's just kind of play our pieces like you know and for all we know she might end up being a great asset and maybe we want her to rule drakenheim mm. no just say it while we're in here yeah the new so queen maybe we <laughs> never need to murder her we'll see there's a we maybe will never need there's... to murder her. sebastian That's can she see your winks though oh god <laughs> oh god Listen. put your goggles on she won't be surprised if a backstabber. I'm winking? totally honest, just like she is. <laughs> no murder needed. Veo, I, uh, I'm sorry that we lost your badge. I'm so mad about it. But at least we have a clear way to get it back. I know it and meant a lot to you. maybe we can even find some information about my father. That's like a bonus. I've never, ever had any information about my father from anyone. So this is... that's. I know I, I'm it's positive I know it's but I like wish it was from a different a sad person. thing that we lost. And like your um the ring. I mean the ring wasn't sentimental to me. It was just uh, kinda cool and magical and uh, made me feel stronger in battle. But yeah, so I, I think yeah, I, I I'm sorry but I would love for you to know more about your your father's whereabouts. Heck, and if so, I could find my father and just get it out of Dragonheim, you know? And problem I'll, solved. <laughs> And I really want to know more about George. And then we'll go to Caspia. Yeah, there's um. We should sleep. <laughs> we should <laughs> no, sleep. No, we're now. all telling stories. Ah, uh, Pluto. Tell me about George. And so how did you mysterious. get? How did you get kicked out of the academy? Things happen. It's, oh, oh. Things happen. Mysteries. You got a bit edgy about it, so. There was an incident. Well, of course, it's the nature of the incident that I'm interested in. There have been moments in my life where I dabbled in magic that maybe I wasn't prepared to dabble in and uh, mistakes were made. The Academy was not happy about it, but they helped me cover up an accident. Oh, oh we went from incident to accident. Um, it was an accident. Sounds like a scary story. I'm not comfortable talking about it here where I don't know if we're being listened to. Maybe sometime. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, for, I'm about that. Save it for the daytime, not the nighttime. Yeah. Save it for our walk to the uh, to the cult of the falling fire. Okay. I guess I owe you guys telling you at some point, but yeah, we'll talk later. All right. And that is where we're going to end for tonight. Ooh. Such a turn of events. I'm glad we got our stuff back, though. Yeah. <laughs> that wraps it up for this evening. A big thank you to our cast, Kelly, Jill, and Joe, for playing uh, this evening. And a huge thank you to Kyle for running the stream uh, behind the scenes and helping manage the stream, uh, as well as a, a thank you to uh, Clayton and Kirsten and everyone who, who helps us keep things organized and keeps us fed, keeps us organized, all that fun stuff. And a thank you to Axe and Shield for generously providing us with some awesome gaming accessories to use at our table. Uh, you should definitely check out the initiative tracker, the flight stands, and check out his Kickstarter that's starting up very soon. Uh, also, a big thanks to Tabletop Audio. Whether you're fighting a Tyrannosaurus Rex for the first time, falling into acid, or just chatting it up with uh, a lady that shifts faces, you can count on them to be the ambient music that you need. Tabletopaudio.com. It's all free. We love the playlists. I hope you do, too. <laughs> 
And finally, thank you to 100 Years Boar for that amazing voiceover in our intro video. You can check them out streaming here on Twitch. Go check them out now. We use Terrain by Dwarven Forge uh, and Miniatures by Hero Forge and WizKids uh, in, in all of our streams. This was all a hodgepodge of Dwarven Forge stuff. It's a chair. Yeah. Yeah. And tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim was sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. I don't know why I just started doing that voice. It <laughs> seemed appropriate at the time. <laughs> we got but some good crits. Good yeah, there were yes, a lot of we had good, some good rolls. Good tonight. die rolls. rolls. Yep. Uh, we got a, a fantastic collection of the premium metal dice, uh, and you can get some for yourself as well. And if you'd like to get a set for yourself now, head on over to SkullSplitterDice.com and be sure to use the discount code DDudes to save fifteen percent on your first purchase. If you enjoy our stream and want to help support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can find it by following the links right below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And if you join us on Patreon, you can also join our Discord where you can chat with all of us about really cool stuff. Nice. Uh, behind the scenes on Drakenheim, general tips and tricks for DMs, players, or just uh, talking to us about nerdy stuff and uh, me occasionally popping up. And, um, I don't know, talking about Funko Pops that I own and yes. various yeah. other things. Yes. Uh, be sure to check out our videos on YouTube as well at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. We got our video on alignment dropping this week, which mm. I think Kyle, Kelly and I have to go and edit like now yeah. <laughs> to get it out the door. Uh, but uh, you'll also find all the prior episodes of Drakenheim right up there as well. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in the Dungeons of Drakenheim.